We're gonna be covering intermediate UCI design. It's a pretty uh, pretty simple class. If you've joined any of our uh, UCI and control fundamentals, a lot of the things we'll talk about today are covered in that. Uh, but we'll be uh, kind of going through a, a, an already completed design and I'll, I'll kind of run through what's in there and then a, a UCI that maybe has been imported in the past or from, from a job previous job you've used or, or maybe somebody kind of threw it together but didn't know how to associate buttons, we'll, we'll kind of talk about some of that stuff. All right. So this file will get sent out to everyone after it's uh, after the webinar is complete. It might might be next week before you get it. It's a pretty basic file, but you'll get it and you can kind of see what we've done. Uh, if you want to follow along in some form or fashion, you can kind of do it on your own. Um, we've got kind of a sandbox here we're going to play in and, and bring some of the controls out from the, the base file here. We'll add some more controls in here, but you can see we're starting kind of from a blank slate in terms of the control aspect of it. The UCI is built uh, for the most part here. We're just going to associate some buttons. You can see we have some, some uh, indeterminate buttons in here that we'll, we'll have to assign controls to and whatnot. So that's kind of what we'll be going through. Uh, like I said, I think I'm flying solo today. So if you have questions, just pop them in the q and I'll try and keep an eye on it as we go through. And I will try to get through this without moving too quickly. Um, but what we've got here, like I said, is just kind of a base file. You can see we're using a, if you look at our inventory, we're using a Core 110. We've got some NV32s in here that we're using for video transmission uh, tied to a display. We've got a soft phone eight inch touch panel, PTZ camera. You can tell this is a an older one because we don't have our new camera in here. I just realized that. And then in our UCI, it's kind of a basic conference room setup here. We've got presentation with video calling and audio calling, uh, some controls for presentation devices. I think we've got immersive in here um, that we'll, we'll go through and then kind of a startup page. So as you can see, we've got uh, a little bit of work on our hands to get this all tied together. So we'll go through using some of the tools that we've got that don't require any any kind of scripting or any kind of uh, any really uh, programming understanding whatsoever. We're just going to use some of the logic tools built into our, our software platform here. Um, let me just start here with the UCI one more time. So one of the things you'll notice is we have built this entire UCI as one page. This is one page with a lot of layers. Uh, we have some advantages to using layers and, and that you can manipulate them without having to worry about whole pages changing. Whenever you use pages, you're, you, you actually start a new page. So any things like, like headers or any kind of information you wanna carry through from layer to layer, uh, it maintains and all we're doing in our file is we're hiding and showing those layers according to what buttons have been pressed on our on our UCI. So you can see all of these will just stack on top of each other. And as long as we just manipulate them appropriately, we should never have any kind of a conflict. Um, so that's that's a, a really nice advantage to, to using these. Another, another advantage is being able to track what is going on in these pages. So if for instance, somebody's looking at their touch panel in a room, and maybe you're using our enterprise manager for remote access. Uh, you can dial in and see what's going on on the user the user interface. If you use layers, pages, all of that's driven locally by the panel that's using the web browser or anything like that. Um, it just gives us a lot more flexibility.
up of the other layers in, in their Z order. So you can see if I show this start layer, it covers up everything because it's all the way at the top. And that's just important to note. If you if you are having issues when you're moving stuff around between layers, you can see um, Z order plays a factor. You can also drag to move these layers up and down. Same with the contents within them. If you drop something on the wrong layer, all I need to do is drag it up here and now it's on, on that start layer. So just some quick tips on, on using that and, and how that operates. All right, let's jump back to our sandbox here. So, uh, you know, one of the first places we can start here is uh, using our uh, UCI layer select or uh, controller. So we can bring this in. And as you can see in our properties over here, we have some different options for uh, what to what how to set this block up. So you can see we've got a couple of UCIs. You can see we have a finished example in this file. We're just going to be talking to our sandbox UCI. And then we, since we're only using that one page, like I mentioned, we'll just leave that there. And then we have the is shared. We're not sharing any of these layers, so we can leave that set to no. Now, I, um, one of the ways I use the layer controller is I will I will make multiple copies of it. So depending on what it is I'm doing within uh, the context of uh, some logic blocks, you'll see as we start dropping more things in here, it kind of can get messy. You can do it a few different ways. You can have one layer controller. You can have multiple layer controllers. I tend to use multiple, so I have less things jumping around. You can kind of keep things controlled. But for now, we'll just expose all these pins, and then we might back down uh, out of them as we as we add more to our, our setup here. So I'm going just going into the properties here. I'm exposing the visibility pin on all these. And so what we can do is using uh, a couple of different tools, we can drive these layers and, and kind of track our logic through the file and decide when we want to show certain layers and when we don't. So you can see uh, all of our layers are shown there and we can just wire those. Um, to our selector. So that's the next thing I'm going to pull out here is a selector, which we can set up. This gives us some, some uh, mutually exclusive buttons here. So we can flip through layers and never have the same thing showing or, or multiple things showing that we don't want to by using those. I'll usually name this. I, I typically will use a, a selector in the way of, of having a, a nav uh, or navigation, right? You might have multiple. And as we saw in our in our design here, let me go to the uh, presentation. Oops. We have some different options. So you might have a selector for these nav buttons here, and then maybe you use another selector for these um, buttons here if they weren't, th th that's not the case in this design, but it could be depending on what it is you're doing in your system. But I'll always label these so I know that I'm, I'm using the right one, especially if I'm using multiple in a file. So we'll have a few um, a few pins exposed there from our selector. So we drop the uh, in our in our properties we we drop these selector one two three four out, and now we have uh, some some pins here we can use. I'm going to jump over to the finished example here and make sure I'm covering everything. So we're going to show a couple different things here. So we're going to have our presentation uh, flag. So this will be a way we can wire this pin to other pins within our file. And this might move around a little bit as we go and start adding. But for now, we'll, we'll start with these. We'll have a VTC pin. And these directly correlate to those layers that we have uh, shown on our panel here on the left. So we have a presentation, a VTC, and an ATC. And then we'll do a start. So right out of the gate, we can tie these um, these flags to the layers we want them to to show. So we can go presentation, VTC uh, here, visible and ATC. And then if we emulate, we can give some some names to these just so we can track them as we uh, as we run through. ETC, ATC, and start. And then I'll sometimes I drag this selector out. So if you need a quick reference on what you're looking at uh, in terms of what's been selected, you can do that. You can see it right there. So I can copy these buttons. You can drag them over one at a time. Oh, looks like my last one didn't take there. 
You can drag these four buttons straight over to your sandbox. Um, let's see, I'm going to dump them on this layer so they don't go anywhere. And we know that first one was presentation. So if I drag this button over the top of my presentation button here, I get this pop-up that says, hold the control key to assign settings to this control. So if I hit it, you can see it goes green. And then if I let go of my mouse and control, I get a couple options. So I can remap this button now to represent that selector button that we drug over, or I can transfer control style, uh, which will transfer the, uh, the visual properties of that button. But we want to remap the control. And now you can see that button now has an association to that selector, that first button on the selector. We'll do the same for our VTC here. And then this one was our ATC, which is our phone page. And now you can see those buttons uh, are associated to that selector. And I believe on the main page here, we actually have those same buttons. So I'm going to do that again. So here's our presentation. Here's our video. And again, I'm just holding control to get that menu pop up. When I release my mouse and control, I get this pop up, select remap control. Now those are all mapped. We can jump back here and we can actually see those work for us. Let's see. It's going to look funky because not everything has been set up, but we can go through, go back to sandbox, and we can uh, flip between those buttons as you see. And like I said, it, we've got to add the, the logic to hide some of this other stuff, but you can see those buttons are, are tracking whether we're doing it at the selector itself, which is what these buttons represent, or on the page. Uh, and then we can. Uh, Go back, let's turn the emulation off. Something you'll notice with our layer controller and the and the names of our layers is we have uh, numbering next to them. That's specifically so in our layer controller block here, we get them in order and they don't jump all over the place. They're alphanumeric order so if you had if you just had the the names of the layers these these would be all out of whack this kind of keeps them grouped in a way that uh that makes sense when you're looking at it and if you're if you're really curious about reading all those on the uh, on the block you have to uh, make this block really wide and type in uh type in something really long here and it will uh it will stretch that block out you can see now it's a little, little more visible uh if you put any kind of space is in there, it will create a line break and, and that block won't get as wide as if you need to see those, you have that option there. I see a question here. Uh, is there a way to see what the button mapping is? So if I get a design, I can see where someone has mapped a, a, a graphic on the touch screen to the design. You can do that. Let me show you how. So if we jump over to our uh, UCI here, I can click on a button and hit Control F. And I get this pop up here that says jump to next copy of control or jump to source of control. So if I hit jump to source, you can see it snaps me back to where it came from and it highlights the button that I've that I've drug onto that panel. And this works back the other way. So I can click this VTC button, hit jump to first copy of control. You can see it went to this first copy because that was our initial copy to the uh, UCI. I can hit next and now it jumps to my video call, which is where that was mapped uh, to. So we can hit source and then first copy. You can jump around so you can always kind of see how that see how those are mapped. But pretty pretty quick and easy way to do that. Uh, since we know those are working, I'll delete them. All right. One other thing I will show in our UCI layer controller is we have the ability to add some transition effects to our to our buttons here in emulation mode, you can see we get some options, but we can have the layers fade and, and slide in from different directions. There's a couple different ways you can map those. So sometimes those are useful if you wanna make something look a little, little fancier. Uh, when we get to adding our end call, we'll probably add some transition for that. We didn't map our start flag here. I'm going to tag that down here on the layer controller. Right. 
Okay, so let's show our VTC page and let's try and map some of these buttons and then map the logic on how and when we want that to, to show up. So we've got a couple different layers here. Let me start with the connect layer. So we've got a connect layer here. So we have the ability to track the USB connection to our core. So we know when something's been plugged in. So one of the advantages to having that is we can hide controls or we can tell the, the user, hey, you don't have something connected. So for instance, hey, you want to use the video call page, but you don't have your computer plugged in. We can we can tell them, hey, make sure you plug in the USB. So this could be cameras, all of those different connection points and map those top of the page. If you have a really complex system, maybe they're plugged into the wrong place or something, you can kind of guide them based on, on plugged in. So what we can do is jump back to our audio page. You can see these have actually already been created for us. This is our uh, echo canceling speaker phone lock. So this is the one you would use for a video call. You can see in our control pins and the properties over here on the right, we have the active and connected pins shown they're exposed so we can use those uh, to know hey this is when the usb has been physically plugged in and active is used if your uh, computer is requesting to use this block basically the information for this audio back to it so you have um, you actually have an, a, a logic high here that will be driven once the call is connected so if i was using a system right now i would have an active light because i'm using it in a zoom call So I'll jump back. So we know that we've got that USB connected, but since we're we're emulating, we're not able to actually physically watch that map, uh, uh, that plug-in map to a logic high or a logic low. So what we can do is we can actually come over to our custom or our uh, schematic elements and look up a custom control. So in our custom control, we can make this into a toggle button. This can be anything. So you can use this for a lot. This tool is great for a lot of different things. But for this instance, we're going to have a toggle button that we can actually drive to emulate plugging and unplugging of a USB cable. I'll make that a little bigger. We'll call this our USB connect emulator. And then I like to move this over to my user interface just off the panel because then I can hit that button right here. We'll paint this red so it stands out. We know it's kind of a tool to use. Um, so what will happen here is we can actually tie the logic from this, uh, uh, from our USB connect, where is it, down here. So that's coming from our block, our uh, echo canceling speakerphone block, into our toggle. And then out of our toggle, we'll go to our uh, VTC. We want... Uh, will be let's call it BTC connected and then we'll tie that to this toggle except if we do that then we're not going to be able to show our please connect your USB cable so we're going to have to use a control function, which we can monitor the highs and lows of our block. So we'll have an AND block. So I'm just changing that in the properties over here, and we're making it a two input AND block. So what we want to track is when our VTC page is selected, right? So the button on our, on our left uh, navigation, and then we want to see when the uh, USB is connected. And then our VTC connect can go to that. So when we when we have a logic high from this selector being selected and a logic high from our USB being plugged in or our button being toggled, uh, we'll get two logic highs here and then we'll get that logic high that'll drive our visibility layer on this side. And one thing to note is this toggle will track based on uh, real real time. So whenever you load this file, 
that button will be overwritten overridden by the actual physical plugging and unplugging of the USB cable. It'll evaluate, hey, this is a low, and it'll drive it low as soon as you load this file. And then as soon as somebody plugs in USB, it will it will take that a logic high, so it'll track for you. So you don't have to worry about putting something in and deleting it later. Uh, it, this can this can stay in line. So we'll take this logic and. And I'm actually going to change this a little bit. So whenever this is not connected, we need a uh, logic high as well. So we're going to take another uh, logic function or a control function here. We're going to make it a logic not with an input count of one. And now we'll just basically flip that the other way. So the way that'll work is when this uh, USB is not connected, we'll get a logic low or zero out of this block into the not. When not is a zero, we get a one output, which will drive this high. So we'll get, we'll get our two logic statements there. And copy paste the this as we started is I like to have copies of my layer controller, and then I get rid of the things I don't want. So for instance, this block could be just my VTC layers. So I can come in here, hide everything else. And I know I'm kind of doing this backwards. I would uh, I would maybe do it differently if I was doing this, not, not doing this live for, for y'all. Um, I may have had this set up already. But you can see if we do that, now I don't even need these flags anymore. I can take these straight over. And then I see if anybody comes and looks at this, they don't have to track anything. It's all right here, short of that those flags coming in, but we know the layers are there. It's just a little less jumping around. Um, you, again, that's totally preference. I like doing it that way. And then uh, it just seems cleaner in my eyes and, and how I view it. But now we can actually go and test this logic so we'll jump back to the sandbox. We can see we're not connected right now, so we're getting that layer pop up. And now when I click it, oh, my button disappeared. I put it on the wrong layer. Uh, but you can see I'm connected. So we have the controls to the camera now. You can see our preset buttons are here. And then we have some more buttons to map. We'll go back out of emulation. Um, I thought I'd put that. I guess I put it on this layer so you can see my buttons there. I'm going to drag it up here and dump it on the main layer. Now that will stay uh, throughout. Back. We'll hide this connect layer. Now we can associate some press and holds uh, for our camera control. Move this up a little bit. So the way we do our camera control, you can see here we've got a, uh, a USB video bridge block, which comes right out of whichever uh, QSYS device you're using that you're plugging the USB into. Uh, this one is probably, oh, it's the NV at the table. So we can see NV table here. This USB br video bridge block has been drug out. And that's this one here. It's tied to our camera. Uh, if you had multiple cameras, we have a, a media cast router that you would use uh, to switch between the cameras. But for this, this uh, system, we're just doing one camera. So the way we do a preset or a snapshot, we would come over here to the, our left panel, our design elements here, and we'll uh, go to snapshots. We can create a new bank of snapshots and call it camera presets. In those presets, we want to track the coordinates of the camera. So all I need to do is drag. I've opened my camera block. I'll drag my camera uh, coordinates right up here to camera presets. And you can see I drop it in. And now it's anything that I change and then save within the presets, um, these will be affected. So right now, the only thing I have in there is the PTZ coordinates. Uh, if we had multiple cameras, you might drop uh, a camera router in there, and you might be able to save some some variations of those of those uh, presets based on the camera that's selected. It just all depends on on your system. Again, this one's pretty easy. So we'll drag over the presets, and then we have uh, another button to bring in, or or a couple of buttons here, and that is our blocks. This is our press and hold block. So what that does is. We can determine after a set amount of time uh, whether or not we get a logic high from our long press or a logic high from our short press. And that's done in the just in the properties of this block here when we open it up. I'll emulate. 
and we can set that to let's go two and a half seconds and now what we'll get is if we press it once and let go we get the short logic high if we press and hold for two and a half seconds we'll get the long logic high and so what that gives us the ability to do is tied to our snapshot so in our snapshot we have the ability to expose let me open this up so you guys can look at that too We've got our load buttons, our save buttons, and some others. We're just going to expose the pins for our load. I think we had four camera presets, so we'll expose the four load buttons, and then we'll slide down here, and we'll do the same with our save. All right. And so our long, well, let's uh, make a couple copies. We're going to need a few of these. And then we'll take all of our longs and I'm just doing a control and click. Our longs, we wanna to go to our save. And then we do the same for our short. If you noticed, I set the value of that press and hold before I started copying it so that I don't have to go in and change all of those after I'm emulated since I did it initially. All right, and then we can take these press and hold buttons and put them on our UCI. I'm just going to drag them out this way and then take them all over at once. I'm going to cut those, jump over to our VTC page. Now we've got our buttons. I'm doing my same remap, dragging hold control and drop the button and now i've got some presets that are mapped we don't need those copies anymore now we can see those buttons are mapped um, and we can actually pull out our uci this is another way uh i forget to do this sometimes when i'm working on one screen uh but i can snap that that uh uci block or the uci physical UCI over here on the side and keep my schematic open on this side. But we can open up here. We can go in and see how our uh, presets are working. So I'll go back into emulation mode. I'm going to have to reconnect my laptop. That's one of the reasons I keep that button there off to the side. Now I can see my, my uh, preset buttons are here. I can move the camera a little bit, press and hold for a second and a half. When I let go, we now have a load one. We can do the same with two. Actually, let me uh, move my camera that doesn't exist. I'll resave two here. And now we can see I can flip between load one and load two. If we want to do a third, we can do that. So I'll press and hold my third position. I'm going to pan over to the right a little more and zoom in. And then we'll say four. And after about three seconds, I'll let go. And now you can see all of my camera presets are being recalled using those press and hold buttons tied to that that uh, snapshot controller pretty easy there uh, but very useful you can like i said you can do this with multiple cameras uh, you, it, you just have to associate some different pieces to the uh, snapshot component so it might be a camera router or something like that if you're using multiple all right Let's jump to, I'm going to close the UCI there, snap it back. We're offline. So let's look at our presentation page, our next section here. We'll go into our layers. Let's hide VTC for now and show presentation. Well, we've got some buttons here. So there's a couple ways we can do this. Uh, for instance, the uh, I think this system, since we have the NVs in it, let's jump over here to our layout. Yeah, we've got a laptop input at our table encoder, an Apple TV input, and a, and a Roku, uh, or it says Roku, but it looks like it's meant to be immersive. Let's change that. Oops. There we go. So now it matches. So those are these buttons can just be uh, representative of. Oops. Oh, we're not doing switching there. We're doing switching at the decoder. 
So all those streams, the way that works is each one of those streams is independent of one another, um, depending on the setup of the sources. So you can do your switching here at the decoder is what we're doing. Uh, so I'm pulling off my AV123, uh, which represent these connections. So you can see when I hover over the pins, I've got AV input one, AV input two, AV input three, and those are your streams coming into that. If you had more than one NV in this system, uh, you could expose more pins. So what you've got here in your properties for that decoder is this th uh, number three is set. If this was, if we had, you know, eight streams we wanted to bring in, we could punch that in. Um, so we can adjust. You see, now I have eight uh, eight inputs on this block. I can have more encoders coming in. But we'll leave it at three, and we'll just take these three buttons here which represent our laptop, Apple TV Immersive. I just control C, bring it over here to our presentation layer. And I've got those buttons. AV1 was our laptop, remap that button. Number two, Apple TV. And number three was our Immersive. Let's snap this guy over again. We can watch that work. to emulation we can see those buttons will uh we go to presentation those will track over here on the left side i click apple tv we're getting that wireless for immersive it switches to three and then laptop so you can see we've got some different things going on there uh these will track on both sides again this is something that is really uh only possible because we did layers. Um, I know this is something real simple here, but being able to track this anywhere, uh, the layers make that all possible, just makes it a cleaner, faster way to uh, navigate and to, and to build these UCIs. So we see that's working. Let's go back to the presentation. Uh, we have some other sub layers, I'll call them, that were created for the presentation page. Hide BTC, go to presentation. So we have some layers here, it looks like, for the Apple TV for controls there, and then wireless looks like the uh, information re uh, required to connect to the immersive is, is shown here at the bottom. But we need to build in some logic for when we want these layers to show. So if we go over to presentation here, I'm going to actually close this for now. I'm going to steal this layer controller and then expose some different pins for it, which will be our presentation pins. And then I'll hide the VTC pins because I don't want those. And then we got to kind of think through like we did with the uh, the layer controller over here for our uh, USB emulator. It's a little different, but we'll have, uh, we'll be using a control function and for this to drive that. So when our presentation layer is selected, we get a logic high, right? Well, we also want um, the uh, visibility for uh, Apple TV to only show when the Apple TV has been selected. So one of the things we can do within our decoder is we can actually see, it looks like those pins have already been exposed here. We have the ability to track which output or which input is routed to which output. So we can see AV123 is shown here under our select option. So we'll get a logic high uh, when each of those is selected. So we can go here to source ATV for Apple TV, take that flag to our presentation uh, and our and block with the presentation. So now when we have the source selected for Apple TV, which is input two on our NB32 and our nav selector has the presentation selected, we get a logic high here, which will drive that layer high and show it to us. And I'm just lazy and going to copy this as anybody should uh, work smarter not harder we know we also have another uh, option for immersive i know it's called flag here from the source let me show my interface again we can go back to emulation and we should be able to watch that work in real time. There we go. I selected Apple TV. I get my control not on that page as well. So again, a pretty easy way to do some cool animations uh, for uh, 
giving more information to the end user, making their life easier. We know this is this is the thing the end user sees, and if we if we do this well, um, this is the only thing they ever see, and and so we give you a lot of tools to make it easy to do those things. All right, let's jump back over here. We'll go offline. Something else we can do with our uh, layer is we can bring in a a banner whenever we're in call. So for instance, here at the uh, top, we've got this banner that's been created for us that we just want to show when our call's been off hook. If we've gone off hook, if we've connected to a USB uh, device that's a, a bridging device, we can track a few different places. If our camera's in, been initiated in a call, we can we can track that as well. So in our project, or I'm sorry, in our sandbox here, we'll go ahead and drag over a UCI layer. We have in call here for visible. And what we'll need is another control function because we're going to monitor in a few places. Uh, we're going to look at our VoIP. If you remember, we have a VoIP function in this, or a VoIP soft phone in this system. We also have the connection for our camera, and we also have a connection for our uh, USB speaker phone that we'll talk to. So I'll come over here in my properties of this function. We want an OR because we want this to happen regardless of which function goes high. We want it to happen no matter what. So if we jump back to our project, you can see, remember we talked about our USB active, which is directly related to being in a call using the uh, echo canceling speakerphone. That's a different connection than if you're using um, USB for audio. So if you came into our inventory here, I think we can uh, we can turn on, let's see if it's here. So in our USB audio bridge properties, we actually have an option for sound card or sound card and speakerphone. Those are not the same thing. Your, your your computer, when it plugs in, will will navigate which audio output you need to use. Obviously, if you're in a call, it's going to know to use the echo canceling speakerphone. And if you're just playing uh, program audio, it will use the sound card. Uh, but in doing that, this knows, it, since we're using just the echo canceling speakerphone, this knows it's only going active when you're in a USB call. So we can take that active. Uh, I'll copy that over to my OR gate and we'll have, oops. I'll just do it here. USB active. And then up above that, we have the VoIP off hook. So in our, our uh, soft phone block, we have the ability to monitor when the phone's gone off hook. So we've got a flag for that that we'll put here. And then the other one I mentioned was our camera. So we have this USB video bridge that is associated to our NV32 that we're using in this system. For the soft codec function, we have camera active, which will We'll get a logic high when a software has requested that camera be be streamed to it, and we can tie that in now. And now we've got our our layer here, but I won't be able to test that, right? I can test the off hook because I can I can make the uh, soft phone go off hook. But just like we did with our USB connect up here, we can actually copy this down here and make this our off hook emulator. And again, this will track the same way. And now we've got an off hook emulator with a button and we'll actually run the logic or through this. And I'll actually take this button and put it on my layer over here. We'll call this off hook so we know which one's which. The other one's my USB. So you can kind of see that that I, logic again, just three, the three uh, active pins, I guess we'll call them the flags from our pins uh, for driving that logic or and run into our, our uh, toggle here and then driving that layer. So we'll jump back, we'll emulate, and we'll see when we go off hook, we get that in-call status pop up, go away when we're off hook. I'll actually jump back here to our layer controller and we'll make this guy pop in from the top. I don't know how this will look coming through a zoom call but it slides in and slides out it looks pretty clean here on my end uh, hopefully it looks the same for you um all right so now that we're not we're not off hook it goes away yeah there we go cool 
let's take a look at the rest of our buttons we have here that we haven't addressed and see what's left. So we've got uh, a power button up here. That's probably our shutdown. I feel like I've maybe skipped past the audio conferencing, but that looks like it's all tied in. So one of the things I'll show you uh, for remapping for audio conferencing, that's a, a really useful tool is uh, when you've got all these buttons, you can do the whole drag and drop method. It just takes a lot longer. Um, one of the things we have is our, in our tools is our remap function. So if you brought in this UCI, say you imported it and it didn't immediately associate itself to that soft conference uh, or the soft phone block rather, you can come in here and you can actually select the entire um, block that would be associated to it. So it just saves you time for mapping those buttons. So if I came in here and it's sandbox, I can find the, uh, it's actually on the project page. I can find that soft, oops, soft phone uh, block right here. And it would remap all those buttons at once. So obviously we only have one in this design um, and it's already associated. But if you didn't have to, if you didn't have that, say you added it after, after the fact, you'd have all these indeterminate buttons. You can remap them all at once because they're all associated with that block. Uh, make sure you click OK, or you will lose all of that. That has bitten me before. Uh, let's see. This will just talk about our power up there. So one of the ways we can track power um, is using one of our, our functions or one of our elements called a flip-flop. That flip-flop, we have some, some different functions within it. We, can, we have some discrete basically discrete on and off buttons. Think of like a, a commercial TV remote. It has a power on and power off and a toggle. That's essentially what you've got here. So we can track uh, some different things. We also get a logic high based on, on its uh, function or based on the state of the, of the block itself. And then we, we also have a state button here, which toggles back and forth. These, these three buttons here are trigger buttons. Uh, so they require being fed into something that can take a trigger to drive its logic. Uh, if you need a toggle, you have the state button there. So what we can do is we can use this, basically the set and reset uh, as, our, as our power functions, if you will, or in this case, we're using it for some pop-up. So what we've got is when you hit this button, we want to pop up this confirmation page that says, hey, you hit the shutdown. Is that actually what you want to do? Uh, so just a confirmation page. So we have a couple ways to address this. Um, we want this button to pop up the page or that that specific layer. So we'll use the flip-flop out to give us that logic high. So the way that will work is we get a not out when we are not in a, in a high state. If I set, you can see our, our state goes high and we get that logic out or the logic high on the out pin. We can see if we hover over the pin, it says out is true. So we can take that to drive our pop-up layer. And we'll just call this confirmation. Actually, let's pull over another layer. Look at that. Make it easy. Confirmation visible. And we'll hide our in call there. So now I've got that tied in. So that will show that layer when we hit that button, but we need to associate the set. So the set is our, that, that button will always go a logic high. If I hit set, it's gonna go logic high. If I hit set again, nothing changes, it stays high. If I hit reset, it will do the opposite, right? It will clear that, that logic high on the out and make the not out a logic high. Um, so we'll take that button here. I just copy it over and remap and now that, when I hit that button, my confirmation layer will pop up. So we need to associate these buttons here. So we've got a back button, which we know will be our reset because it's just the opposite of that set button. We just want to hide that layer again. So I've taken my reset and it looks like, I'm going to copy it there for our back. Looks like this uh, space, somebody has put an invisible button here, whoever made this to also be the back button. So we'll copy this on this button as well. So if the user doesn't know what to do and they just start tapping around the screen, that will also work as the back button and it will not shut down. But now we need to come up with a uh, button to drive the shutdown. So if we jump back here, I'm actually going to make another uh, 
use another flip-flop that can just be our power state. We'll call it that, power state. And we're going to use, let's see, our out and our not out might be useful to have, and then our set. So because of the way this is laid out, I'll just show you before I do it, our start layer here has the uh, the same buttons that are on our navigation, right? But we also want them to, if we're doing things like recalling a preset for default audio levels, or we want to fire a power on command to our display in the room, something like that, we want these buttons to also uh, do, do the power on sequence for us, essentially. But because we have a few of them here, uh, we're going to need a we're going to need an OR gate. So we'll bring in a control function. Get three. And we'll take those flags and just copy and paste them down here. And now we'll get that power state. So the set, if you remember, is is always going to drive our out to a logic high. So that's just power on. And sometimes I'll just flag things. Even if I don't send them anywhere, I'll flag them so that we know uh, uh, what that is doing, essentially, if I'm using that for something. But that's just letting us know, hey, this is a, this is a state uh, for power on. And then this will be uh, not out, will be our power off which we can see, we'll take that. Where did that go? Looks like that went somewhere. Oh, yep. So you can see in the file, somebody already flagged these mutes for power off. So when we get that logic high from the flip-flop, it actually will mute all of our audio outputs. So it'll silence the room. That's kind of a neat way to do it. But we also want that uh, power off here to reset our flip-flop, right? So if, if we think through that logic, if I've got this pop-up and we hit shutdown, we also want to hide this layer because this will still be showing, even if we flip to that start layer, when we come back, this layer is still going to be up. So we've got we've to fire that back low so we can reset this flip-flop for our confirmation page with the power off, which comes from our flip-flop up here. And then we have to associate our uh, shutdown, let's see, our shutdown button, which will come from this reset. And I'll show you what we're doing with that. So our power off, we want to also show our uh, main layer. Let's see, not our main layer, our start layer. So we can actually have it select this selector here uh, when we hit the power off or when we get a not out. So this not out state is our power off. This button, remember I pulled from the reset. So that's always going to be power off. It's always going to drive this to a, this not out to a logic high. And let's see, you got to select the layer I want it on. And then we'll remap that shutdown button. And delete. back here those buttons are all associated and so let's we can look at that logic one more time here because any of these buttons being pressed drives this to a logic low this start to a logic low that will uh take away that start visibility right so that's our start visibility so that will go logic low by pressing any of these buttons, we automatically get our power state to a power on, which uh, basically turn hides the things we want it to hide. It, it switches this selector off, which it doesn't really matter because we've already changed it here. Um, but we'll get a logic, we'll get that logic not out a low, which indicates that the power is on because our out is high. Let me delete this button and we can actually see that function now in the emulation. And I think we've associated all the buttons. Here's that we're in our off state right now. We can hit presentation, then go straight to our presentation page. We see that the Apple TV is there. Uh, it looks like it was the last thing we had selected. So that's up. We can do more logic to drive it to automatically flip to uh, what, whatever source we want on startup. But we can see all of our presentations working here. Our video call is still working. We can plug our USB in and see that page here, get our presets going 
telephones here, uh, we can actually take our system off hook and we see that the call is in progress and it will stay there on all the layers regardless of what we do because we're still in a call. Our power off should work. We get our pop-up here, back, back if we don't click anywhere uh, on that page or anywhere on the uh, pop-up, but on the outside. And then we should get our system shut down. We get the shutdown and we're back here. Um, one more thing I'll do just to kind of put a cap on that is we'll add a fourth pin to our logic or here for our off hook emulator. And we can do a power off. We'll also hang up our phone call. That should work. Let's see. Power off. Go off hook, shut down. That oh, didn't work. Oh, we need a knot there. Just kidding. Power would be power. Let's see. But you get the idea. I won't mess with that. That's something I'm trying to add, but you could add it so that that uh, that state goes a uh, a uh, logic low. Um, so we can do that with a snapshot or any different ways, but that kind of shows you, uh, that kind of wraps us up there. I mean, all those buttons are now associated. You can see, oh, there it goes. It went, it went logic low now. Um, but you can see we're not on the call anymore, but you can see we, we've associated all those buttons. We haven't written any code. We've just used, uh, tools that are already available to you in the software, uh, using selectors. We're using the flip-flops. We've used a custom, uh, control button here, some press and holds control functions. Uh, I'll hang on for a few minutes. If, if anybody has any questions or comments or anything like that, I'll, I'll hang here until 10, but if any, or until 11 rather central time, if uh, you got any questions, I'll hang on, but feel free to drop off. Kind of wraps us up. Stop sharing. Appreciate y'all for joining. Got some uh, questions popping up here. What is the shared function under the touch panel setting? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. If you're talking about maybe shared layer, if you have um, multiple pages, you can share layers between those pages. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if that's the uh, the question there. Let me share my screen again. Under, I don't know if this is what you're talking about, the shared layer. Brian, I'm responding to your uh, your inquiry there. Let me keep going and maybe you can give me some more insight. Uh, yes, this file will be shared. Um, you'll get it with a copy of this recording. You thank you. Share and pop up. When you decided what the what UCI the layer selector was affecting. Oh, okay. So if you have the is shared, is that what you're talking about here? I think is uh so if you have a shared uh layer or shared file, uh, I'm sorry, a shared layer between pages, you would uh you would select that. Um, we can also go in see if there's a little more info here. Uh, a second. This shared uh, select yes to control the visibility of shared layers. So yeah, it's it's specifically related to if you have shared layers. Uh, so we can let's take this guy. We don't have any, so I don't know if it's gonna. Yeah, there's no shared layers, so it's not gonna give me any in there. But if you had shared layers, uh, that that you would select that to have them show up so you could use them. Uh, can you go over how the remap UCI control tool works and how this is different from relink? 
Yeah, I have not used the relink function. Let me jump over here. I don't have any options. Let me. That could just be if you don't have buttons. So let me, uh, let me do this. This gain. I'm going to delete this gain block and we'll add it back in. That should break our volume. So I think if I go in here to tools and I go to relink, I uh, thought it would give me an option there to do that because those are not linked to anything. That's not giving me any options. Let's try. Give me just a second here. Look at our handy dandy help file. Uh, Relink UCI. Yeah, that's not in our help file here. I, to be honest, I haven't used that before. Um, I'm not sure who asked that question, anonymous. Um, I'm I ha I have used obviously the uh, the remap tool, um, which I'll I'll jump back in. I'll just show how uh, how that could be used here on the. Uh, I just use the soft phone as an example because it's it's one that has a lot of buttons that you might want to remap all of those buttons versus some of the other blocks. So we'll go UCI. Um, so let me just add a second soft phone in here just so you can kind of see how that works. So I've got a second soft phone. See, it's soft phone two. If I go back to my control here or my user interface, I can go to remap and then I can say, okay, the uh, soft phone, one is what this is associated to currently. Those buttons are all associated to soft phone one. But if I come in here, I can actually select soft phone two. And you can see actually that text changed because it's not been used before. But I can click OK. I can go into emulate. And you can see the. Uh, buttons are from this soft phone two that I've just dropped in now instead of soft phone one because I remapped that whole block and all of these will map together. You can see the the tracking here. I can hit a call and all that's going to map to this block itself because I remapped to the whole thing. Yes, you will get a recording of this class. Um, thanks for joining. Example of how to tie into a VTC program, uh, team zooms, et cetera. Uh, Philip, there's a uh, there's some I think example files on the website specifically for like a teams room. Um, if that's what you're talking about, we have the skins for the the style sheets in there, so you can you can match colors and icons to look similarly to something like teams. Um, but essentially, your your audio is going to look the same way. You're going to use you're going to use these these speakerphone blocks. You're going to connect via USB to the to the computer uh, that that is hosting the meeting. It's it's going to look very similar to this. That's basically what this is. Uh, it's universal though. If you come into the properties, if you're using Zoom, there is a setting here. Uh, once we get offline, you would uh, if you're using Zoom, you have the Zoom compatibility property here that you would want to enable. But this is this is what it would look like. You're going to use this EC uh, speakerphone block, which comes right off of any of our devices that have a host port. Your output, the same thing. Uh, it's coming off of off of that same block, and that's going to drive your output back to the to the meeting. Uh, you have some other functions in here that we didn't talk about. Uh, we do talk about it if you if you join our UCI control fundamentals. We go into each of these blocks, but you have HID conferencing, which gives you some control. Uh, of the of the soft uh, conference software that you're using. So if you're using Teams, you'll get some feedback from Teams, that sort of thing. You have call, accept, decline, phone mute. So you can actually have it track on screen your mutes. If you mute in, in this software, it will actually show that you're muted in, in uh, like the Teams software as well. So there's some other blocks here that you can use, but essentially it's, it's the same thing. I uh, hope that answers your question. Let's see. 
I didn't think you could have elements hanging off the edge of the UCI. I'm assuming that doesn't cause any issue. That's correct, Andy. It does not. Um, let me snap this guy back. Those are just going to be visible in the software because this is just off, you know, the the pixels that you have on your touch screen. This just won't map to them. So it's a really easy way to have those extra, uh, you know, test buttons, if you will, off to the side. And it could be anything. I mean, it, you could have a whole other UCI off to the side if you want. Uh, how do we learn more about these functions and tools? Um, a lot of these are taught in level two. Um, our control and UCI fundamentals class, we we covered more more in depth some of these. You know, we use the selector a lot today. You could use you could use a control router for some of the stuff we're doing for some of your your mutually exclusive buttons. There's lots of different things to to teach. Um, I gotta say, the best way to learn it is just play with it. I that's how I got most of my footing in uh, in this was I did a level one. I didn't get a level two for a long time. Um, but just using the software, you kind of learn some of the tools. What's nice is that when you do it that way, by the time you take the class, you'll probably get more out of the class because you'll have more educated questions to ask because you kind of, okay, I kind of see how this block works, but why does it only work this time and not that time? Uh, you have some of that experience. And you'll, I think personally, when I, when I started doing uh, classes years ago and started taking certification classes and going through this, it helped me tremendously to have played in the software enough to go, okay, I can kind of navigate it where maybe some of the property stuff you already know about, but you don't understand all the differences and the nuances and how things can be presented and toggles versus triggers versus momentary button presses and things like that, that you come in with better questions. So I would, I would definitely say, yes, we taught, we teach a lot of this in level two. Um, a lot of it is in our help files as well. Uh, there's, there's a lot of information in that help file. When sending the QSIS file, please send the before and after. You will have the before and after. So it has the sandbox uh, associated there. Uh, Ron, who asked that question, uh, you'll have in the schematic pages, you see we have a, a project, we have a sandbox, and then the finish. So you'll get this file. The sandbox will be blank, and you'll have the finished example in there, which is, which is what I was kind of glancing at from time to time just to make sure I captured everything. You'll see some different ways, obviously. And here I see somebody used a position greater here instead of a not and an and. Uh, lots of different ways to, to uh, accomplish the same outcomes. Um, back. I feel better about not knowing how Relink works. Uh, Remap is slick, yeah. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, the Remap tool is great. I, I like it, like I said, for the soft phone. Sometimes it can be cumbersome if you don't have all of your blocks named correctly. All of those names in the UCI Remap tool, all of those names come directly from that file. So if you've got, uh, we'll go back to our soft phone. If you've got the, in your project file, if you've got a bunch of gains and they're all just named gain, 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 or gain one, two, three, or five, you're not going to know which one that is. So it really only helps if you name all those, um, especially if you're trying to, to do a bunch at once. But this is a quick way to do it. Uh, you just have to know in advance to, uh, to uh, have those those blocks named appropriately so you're not trying to figure out which is which and open it and close in this window a dozen times to figure out what goes where. Uh, is there a way to add an RTSP stream view of a third party camera on a touch screen? Yes, I'm sure there is a way to do that. Um, we have some different tools for that. Uh, I would recommend attending maybe some of our more advanced webinars where we show those kinds of things. I don't think we have one right now that specifically covers uh, receiving streams in, but I want to say that's how um, the plugin works. If you've ever used Visionary Solutions, uh, they have uh, encoders and decoders. That, that we can actually receive a, a screen scrape of those uh, images on the network. So there are ways to do it. It's just a matter of, of uh, writing a script that can do it, that can pull that data down. All right, I think I got everybody's question there. I'm gonna start clearing these out. Uh, feel free to drop off or ask any more questions. I'll hang on for just another minute while I clear these. I hope everybody learned something today. Uh, picked up a, a new trick or something. Uh, Jonathan, what course covers UCI scripting? Uh, that would be, 
We talk about scripting in Control 201. There's actually been a little bit of scripting added to the Control 101, uh, not quite to that detail, but UCI scripting is definitely something uh, you could achieve after doing the 201. I'd, I'd recommend looking at our help file. There's a lot of examples of how to do that. The, uh, we don't have one specifically for UCI scripting, but if you're talking about layer control and layer manipulation and some of the navigation aspects of it, um, there are some options uh, uh, in, in the uh, uh, UCI script here, I'm sure is what you're referring to, but we don't have a class specifically for that. But if you get through our 201, we do, uh, we do cover a little bit more. Yes, it is dreadful. I agree. Um, more to come as we unlock more more capabilities. You know, that's something I know a lot of people want to see out of the MB32 is is a uh, an image uh, preview on there, and and all all of the things are heard, and all of those requests are we know about, and we we want to see those too. Um, there's there's only so many hours in the day for the guys to work to add new features, so those they do get put on a list, and they. You know, as things are possible, and we we do add them in. So just keep your eyes on the uh, uh, for something more native. Keep your eyes on the the software releases. Can the NV thirty two core pass info to a host PC from a USB touch output on a touchscreen display? Yes, it can. So we have within our uh, our properties here. Um, or our inventory here, we can actually pull out and see where is it USB, which references the uh, USB ports. I believe that's the right one. Let's see. Yep, there you go. So you get a this would this output would represent the host device, and uh, these four ports would represent the uh, the four USB A ports on an NV. So you could actually connect things like a touch screen through this you could do a keyboard and mouse if you wanted to um, definitely you can also use our if you've got multiple nvs in a system we have the uh, usb router block so you could have multiple in here and then give somebody the ability to switch you can automate it you can control it however you want uh, drive it with logic but you have the ability to do uh, i think it's up to 250 uh, let's see if it tells us 64, I apologize, 64 um, by 64. So you can do a lot of, uh, of extension for touch screens and computers and uh, a keyboard and mouse, that sort of thing. We actually were going to set that up here in our training center. I'm in, I'm in Austin here in our training center. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I don't even know that I introduced myself. I apologize, but we have uh, we have uh, touch screens in our training room that we uh, had planned on doing interactive through the NV back to our head end, but we're actually going to upsize those displays. But it is a it is a function that we that we support. All right, and with that, I'm going to shut it down. I appreciate everybody joining today. Uh, thanks. We will see you on the next one. Uh, I think it's two weeks from now. Talk to you later.